Hey guys, welcome. This is a brand new series that I'm going to start. I am really bad at uh, consistency on YouTube. Uh, when I started, I was much better. So I'm really trying to force myself to be a bit more consistent um, this year. So my goal, not my resolution, my goal is to uh, try to hit like one contest every week, try to do something live once a week, and try this new thing I'm calling Pick of the Week. You can see my horrible graphics. Uh, I need to up my Photoshop game at the front of this video. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through uh, all the new comic books that I get in a week and try to read them by Thursday or Friday and just go over what I think is my, my best one. Um, this week's poll was pretty small. Let me show you. The only new stuff that I got into my poll was uh, Heroes in Crisis 4 uh, from Tom King with Clay Man on, uh, ooh, get that glare out of there, with Clay Man on um, art and somebody money, I guess, or Mori on letters. Uh, and uh, this is a series I've been enjoying. I'm a big Tom King fanboy. Uh, this is the only DC comic on my poll this week, and I'll go into this a little bit more in depth in a minute. Uh, Animosity 18 from Marguerite Bennett, Raphael De La Torre, uh, and then down the bottom they've got uh, Elton Tomasi, Rob Schwager, and Marshall Dillon on letters and colors, and I'm not sure what else. Um, but uh, this is a series I've been following with, with great glee for the last... Uh, last year and a half, I suppose. And then the one Marvels I got is I got the Champions Reboot from uh, Jim Zub. There's a lot of glare there because I put it in Mylar since there's some new uh, new characters appearing in this one and some new teams. Uh, Going to go look for some of the incentive variants for this, though I actually do love this cover. Um, as you know, Miss Marvel is my favorite. Putting Miles up front like this, this story is about Miles. Um, at least towards the end, it's about Miles. It's really about the whole new team or teams, I guess you could say, uh, trying to get that glare out of there. Uh, and with the success of Into the Spider-Verse, it just makes sense to put them out front. So only three new comics, which is why I was able to get this done uh, pretty quickly. Drum roll. My pick of the week, hands down, Animosity 18. Um, loved this comic, loved everything about it. Uh, this was a good read, but... Uh, I don't know enough about DC characters to really get fully involved. Tom King does a lot of time jumps. He's leaving bits and pieces of clues. It's fun to follow, but it's, um, whereas in Mr. Miracle and Vision, um, he still does the same sort of like multiple panels, the time jumps, uh, piece of the story. Those were still a little bit more cohesive. This one really is sort of all over the place. You're starting to see bits and pieces. There's the Trinity. Wonder Woman, Superman, Batman, kind of like doing the detective work. There's um, the characters doing their confessions. There's some of the lesser characters that died in the slaughter in issue one. I hope I'm not giving anything away from issue one. If you haven't read that by now, you're probably not reading it. Um, and here, this one is really a battle between was it Booster Gold or Harley or somebody totally different. There's clues that it's either of them, and then they're both blaming each other, so who knows what the heck's going on. Lois Lane is doing some detectiving on her own with um, investigative reporting, and she's getting some clues from some mysterious group. It's good. Uh, it didn't blow me away, though. Um, it's fun. I do like, though, collecting uh, the newspaper clipping uh, variants for these, so that's kind of fun. Uh, the champion story was good. Uh, there is a kind of a reveal at the end. There's a, a big bad coming along. It's cool to see all the um, groups work together as a team, but then not work together as individuals uh, kind of talking to each other. There's some fun stuff with Viv and Riri, uh, and then there's some, some Miles and Nova angst. Um, so you see a lot of these new characters or newish characters, but you really only see the interplay between the established characters. You get a lot more Miss Marvel and um, Miles, Nova, um, not so much uh, Braun, Amadeus Cho, but uh, you get a little bit of, of, of that. But mainly you get some, some Miles stuff and some Viv and Riri stuff, so it's kind of cool. Um, but like I said, my pick is Animosity 18. So let's go into this one and see why this one blew me away. So... I read a lot of comics, I'm sure you guys do too, but this one, uh, it tugs at heartstrings, um, it really gets you going. So first of all, uh, Raphael De La Torre is killing it with the art on this, and he, he does things in here where 
he shows both um, a vicious side of animals. All right, look right over here. Uh, just a very, very sick side. And then it shows a very um, sympathetic, that's the same animal a little while later, uh, rained upon and not looking anywhere near as sick. So just that art really gets me. Um, this particular issue is a culmination of um, a bunch, uh, a long arc where Jesse has been captured. If you don't know the story of animosity, I'm sorry. Um, animals basically come to life during the Great Awakening. They all gain sentience and the ability to speak. And there's big battles between animals and humans. And there's also um, a lot of sub-stories. There's a lot of humans helping humans and humans against humans. Uh, but this one, just finally, Jesse's always been a tough character. Sorry, I'm on the other side. Uh, this young girl, she's about 13, I'd say, and they play her as a 13-year-old who's in a post-apocalyptic world where animals have come alive. Um, so she can be vicious and she can be defending, um, and she's not afraid, obviously, to shoot someone. This is nice because this lady was just wicked evil, so it's good to see Jesse shoot her. Um, but Jesse isn't played like a 17 year old and a 13 year old's body. She's played like a 13 year old. And I really think Marguerite Bennett does a great job at doing that. And then, um, this place where they had all these women locked away, forcing them to give birth to try to like, uh, increase the human race was just a great, uh, splash page. But then right here, she starts a, a song and I'm not familiar with this song, but the lyrics of the song basically are the only, um, they're not, yeah, they're the only dialogue you see for the next few pages, right? So it's not really dialogue, it's narration. Um, and so you can imagine this being a TV show, right? You can imagine, and it's going to be a TV show, you can imagine this scene playing out with like music over like a bunch of uh, scenes where there are no lyrics. Um, and it's just really, really cool. Uh, oh, Mary, Don't Weep is the song. And I don't know it very well. I'm not familiar with it, but uh, it's really good. Uh, if there is one bit that I would criticize this one, this middle um, panel here, a little bit too much exposition. It broke up the, the pacing of the story a tiny bit. Uh, but I love this part down here where Sandor, the dog who's been like her protector and her caretaker, also the killer of her parents, comes and, and tries to save um, Jesse. And now the, the big bad woman has a gun to Sandor's head. And Sandor says, don't kill her. She's like, what, you think I'm going to be merciful? And she, he says, no. And then the next page, he goes, Shh, she's not yours to kill. And then all the other women who'd been kept captive in this walled city, um, they jump on and, and attack. And so Sander gets out of the way. So it's a beautiful reunion between Sander and Jesse. And they've been apart for like six or seven issues. So it's really nice to see them get back together. Uh, and then there's some other little parts that move the story along but aren't totally needed. A lot of the soldiers in this place realize it's their mothers who've been kept captive and they didn't notice that, um, or their aunts, in this case, Aunt Betty. Uh, so there's some tender moments there. But really, this was an issue uh, that does what a good comic should do. It caught me in this story and I didn't feel like I was outside of the story when I was reading it. Um, it's the best way I can put it. Like, you know, you... I forget that I'm laying in bed. I forget that, you know, I've got to set the alarm. I forget that uh, my wife's got work today, so I have to be quiet because she's sleeping. Like, you just totally sink yourself into a story. And if a story can do that, it's tops for me. So, out of the three, and it's kind of small, but out of the three new comics I got today, I got this week, uh, Animosity wins hands down as my pick of the week. All right, let me know what your favorite one from this week was. If you have a favorite comic, I'd love to hear about it. And uh, yeah, that's it, man. Take care, guys. Thank you.